Space, the final frontier. But like the frontier, are we gonna mine, till, and harvest every inch of it? Or is there some room for an interplanetary nature preserve? Hey peeps, Trace here. Thanks for checking out DNews today. Here on Earth, we have laws that can protect areas of land like Yellowstone, the Peak District, or the Serengeti. And according to the International Union of Conservation of Nature, there are almost 7,000 national parks across the world, and some of those are recognized under UNESCO as World Heritage Sites. But what happens when you go into space? Out there, we don't even have a UN. There aren't even ends. Additionally, according to some lawyers and space experts, there's no government that can actually control space anyway, so national parks are out too. How would you feel if China, India, Japan, or Russia headed to the moon and took a little walk around of the Apollo 11 site, leaving their own footprints to mingle with those of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin? How's that make you feel? To keep everyone on an even keel, there are a bunch of treaties that govern space and the things in it. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967 says that no country can hold sovereignty over any celestial body. The Moon Treaty of 1979 reiterates that and adds that countries cannot militarize space either or send satellites that would do so. That complicates the job of an archaeologist though because UNESCO can't declare the Apollo site a protected place without declaring it for a country. It's all a big political traffic jam, but in space. A space jam of political traffic. Antarctica is considered a scientific continent. It's governed by laws that keep any country from owning it, as are sections of the ocean floor. Archaeologists with the University of New Mexico and Las Cruces used that precedent for the preservation of historic sites in space, too. Their reasoning is the moon holds family photos, pilot wings, cameras, golf balls, and even bags of fecal material, all of which could be of interest to future generations. Yes, even the fecal material. It doesn't stop with the moon. Archaeologists are also concerned with space junk. I did a video on it a while back about this growing problem. Look it up. There are satellites and probes orbiting ours and other planets. Little bits of human history that some companies want to recycle, others want to preserve or destroy. When archaeologists are writing down how the first humans explored space, wouldn't it be nice to have something to actually look at? Regardless, for now, these treaties specify that we cannot own anything in space. And while someday we'll have to address that, for now it's nice to look and see the frontier. It's kind of like Lewis and Clark, but instead of a river, it's emptiness. And on the other side, adventure. How do you feel about this? Should we start working on laws to protect places and things in space, even if some consider it just junk? Do you have an idea of how we could do it? Tell us about it in the comments. And thanks for watching DNews, everyone. We are here twice a day, every day. Come chat with us on Twitter, Facebook, or even Google+. We're definitely around. Thanks a lot, everyone. I'm Trace. See you later.